The following is a presentation of the Fairfax Network. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos. Hello, welcome to our World Tour Language Series and to program number nine, Spanish program number nine. My name is Mrs. Ada. Me llamo Doña Ada. And I would like to welcome you to this lesson with the objectives. We have something very special for you, boys and girls. We have making a piñata. We have the review of shopping and we have numbers. We have food from Mexico or Mexico and the months of the years and the days of the week in Spanish. So we have uh, quite an extensive objectives today and we'd like to start with the piñata. Piñata are items that are very well used during Christmas and birthday parties. And they're very, very festive. And we're going to learn how to make a piñata very quickly. Before we do so, I want to show you what do we do with a piñata. There we have a group of children uh, trying to birth out the piñata. And we have a child here that is next to the piñata and is blindfolded. And that's what we do. One is pulling the string, avoiding that child to hit the piñata. And it goes on and on until finally it breaks and all these goodies come out. So let's go quickly to the materials, to the recipe of the piñata. The materials that you need for the piñata are the following. You need a balloon in this particular one that we're making. You need newspaper strips, you need water and flour, and some crepe paper. Let's go quickly on how to make a piñata. And I will describe as you look at it. Take, so pay good attention, pay attention to it. Here we have the items that we need. We need the strip of papers that we have cut out already for you. We have a cup of flour and a cup of water and we have some string that is going to hold the piñata. We have some crepe paper that is to decorate the piñata. You can use, choose the colors you wish. We have a pin to burst the balloon out, and we have scissors. Now remember to have an uh, adult with you at all times using these things. Then we have here the piñata already, uh, the balloon already blown, and we have strips of papers that we have applied and how to apply this one. We use that mixture of flour and water and we apply to the newspaper and we just put it in our piñata. You see the flour and the water becomes the glue. We let it dry for a couple of days so it becomes hard and then we, apply, we proceed to apply the paper, the crepe paper, very, very softly and very carefully because it can tear, as you can see, if you put too much water, too much mixture. We use the same mixture that we had before and we continue applying all this uh, paper, crepe paper around. You can also use other kinds of paper that is uh, easy to apply with this glue. And you cover the whole piñata. Let it dry also again about a day. Here we have a finished product of a piñata. It's not necessarily the one that we're making in a balloon. This is another shape. You can make all sorts of shape inside. As you make a hole, inside you put candies, and party favors and goodies. And then this is what happened. I want to show you some preschoolers that have uh, a pin had a piñata during the celebrations, winter celebrations, and we made a snowman out of it. Very appropriate for preschoolers. And here is the finished product. And we have now some children, one by one, I'm going to show you how these kids had so much fun just, just trying to hit that piñata. We just um, hung it from the ceiling and we asked each child to take turns three times and try to hit. Here it is. You see there's an adult always uh, supervising these kind of games. It's, it's very dangerous, can be dangerous if you don't have supervision. You're holding a pole, you're holding a bat, and you're hitting. So have a, a person watching. Here is another preschooler in an attempt to break that piñata. It took us quite a few attempts. And here we have a fun-loving child who has a lot of fun hitting that piñata. And the teacher, of course, is trying to help him to hold that bat. We finally broke that piñata after quite a few attempts. Here's another one. 
And then what happened is this, all these goodies came on the floor and the kids had so much fun trying to select their goodies. We had candies, we had all kinds of things in that piñata. So you can do that at home. I hope you had followed it. If you need any assistance, write me and I'll let you know what to do. So now let's proceed to our language class. We would like to open our books to page 41 because we're going to do the numbers. We're going to continue. We did 20 and now we're going to go into 21. 21, and this is a whole one word. It's two words together attached with an I in the middle. So it's 21, 21, 21. And then from 21, we go to 22, 22. 22, and you continue. You already know the numbers from 1 to 20, so you say 23, 24, and so on, until you reach 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, and then you do again 31. Watch this one. It's three words, 31. We do not take that A out and add a little E. I'm sorry, little i. We just leave it as it is and add a y to connect those two numbers. Treinta y uno. Once you reach treinta, it changes. Let's go again to another number. Treinta y uno. Cuarenta. That is forty. After we finish with thirty-nine, treinta y nueve, we go to forty. Cuarenta. Cuarenta. And then cuarenta y uno. Three words again. 41, and then we go to another number. After 41, we say 50. Remember that I am just climbing, jumping from 41. You go 42, 43, 44, until you reach 50. And this is 50, 50. And see that C next to the U becomes a K sound, 50. And then you say 51. 51. And again, you continue counting 51, 52, 53, and so forth. And later on, we will continue learning some more numbers. Now that we have learned these numbers until 51, I'd like to do as we always do these past few lessons that we have introduced uh, words for our alphabet letters so we can practice our pronunciation. Let's go to the last uh, few letters that we have left is V as ventana, which means window. Ventana. Say it with me. Ventana. And here is one. W. Believe it or not, we have this word in our uh, dictionaries, winds, windsurfista. Even for me, it's hard to say. Windsurfista. Say it out loud with me again. Windsurfista. Fista. Now, windsurfista. Windsurfista. Can you guess? Muy bien. Windsurfer. Windsurfer. And then we have the X, X, and we say xilófono. Xilófono. Not xilófono, but c it's, it's like an S sound. Xilófono. It's a xylophone. Xilófono. And then here is one. You'll never guess what it is. The Y, Y, is yerno, yerno, yerno. Say it again, yerno, that, that strong G, yerno. And that is son-in-law. That's the word we use called a son-in-law. We say yerno. And then the Z, Z, we say zanahoria. Zanahoria. Say it with me. Zanahoria. Zanahoria. And what does zanahoria mean? Carrot. You can see that the H is silent. Zanahoria, it's a carrot. We love to eat zanahorias. Zanahorias, carrot. Now that we have introduced those words, practice them. I hope you have jotted them down. If you need, please write to me. And when we talk on the phone, just mention if you need some translation or more words we can add to your list. Now we're going again shopping spree. And we're going to talk about ir de compras, ir de compras, to go shopping. And do you recall that we learned some phrases that are on page 42? Page 42, 
They will open your book on page 42 and see those phrases like how much, cuánto vale, cuánto es, cuánto cuesta, I believe you have that. And then if you want to say it's too expensive, it's es muy caro. I'm not adding them here because you have them all in page 42. So we're going shopping and these are the words that I want you to practice again. Let's say a man's shirt. How would you say a man's shirt? Let's see. Una camisa. Very good. Fabuloso, mis estudiantes. Muy bien. Una camisa. Camisa. That I is quite long, right? Camisa. Una camisa. Now, I'm going to ask you to please remember, try to remember again on shopping, on, on money. How do we say dollars and cents, and we said that, we mentioned that it was dólar, or dólares, when it's plural, and cents is centavo, or centavos. And I hope you have that, uh, jotted that down so we can practice the next one. If I put these prices, let's read them in Spanish. Let's say that the shirt, una camisa, this is what it costs. Say, ¿cuánto vale? ¿Cuánto es? Let's say that it, it's $25.47. To me, that's an expensive shirt already. So let's see. 25. Remember, you know your numbers already. 25 dólares, 47 centavos. Now, I would say it very quick. The way you will hear it is 25 dólares con 47 centavos. 25 dólares 47 centavos. And then another price, maybe, a little higher price, it will be 32 dólares 54 centavos. Remember those numbers? 32 dólares 54 centavos. Muy bien. And then let's try this one. I want you to say it. I'm going to wait. Yes, it's 46 dólares 32 centavos. Say it again. 46 dólares 32 centavos. Muy bien, mis estudiantes. Let's go to another uh, item while we're shopping. And we go to the belt. How do we say belt? Un cinturón. Un cinturón. And we are going to shop this belt and see how much it'll cost to us. How much? Un dólar, one dólar, and 33 cents. Un dólar con 33 centavos. Un dólar 33 centavos. I think you've mastered these numbers quite well. Let's see the next one. A little more expensive, a belt, un cinturón. Un dólar 53 centavos. Un dólar 53 centavos. And the last one. Suppose you ask, ¿cuánto vale? And they'll say, oh, vale dos dólares. Dos dólares, because it's more than a dollar. Diecisiete centavos. Again, dos dólares. 17 centavos, and you say, oh, es muy caro, Doña Ada, es muy caro. Un cinturón muy caro, and I will agree with you. Let's go to the next item that we're going to shop today, and we're going to go and shop socks, and we'll say, los calcetines, remember that word? You may hear also, as I said, los calcetines. Betines, with a TH sound in the C, that's perfectly all right. And in Puerto Rico, we say las medias, and I'm sure in some other countries, las medias, it means the same, socks, pair of socks. And we're going to shop socks, and I have these prices for you. Let's see what we have here. We have a dollar 22 cents. So, un dólar 22 centavos. Say it again. Very good. Muy bien. Un dólar veintidós centavos. Let's go to the next one, la próxima. Mm -hmm. Bien. Un dólar cuarenta y nueve 
centavos. Lay it slowly. Un dólar cuarenta y nueve centavos. It's not getting any cheap. Let's see the next one. Yes, dos dólares. Now it's, it's more than one. So it's dos dólares. And what, how do we say that? Now don't, don't be afraid. Just say it. Nueve centavos. That's correct. Muy bien. Dos dólares, nueve centavos. I think you're mastering your shopping. Pretty soon you can go to the mall and shop in Spanish. Let's see these uh, pictures that I have here and also to practice our numbers, our vocabulary, as well as how to say when you go shopping. Let's say, it, what is this? ¿Qué es esto? What is this? This is a book and it's el libro. ¿Cuánto cuesta or cuánto vale? Vale siete dólares. You guessed right, mis estudiantes. Muy bien. Let's go to the next item again. We have one item that's more expensive this time, and it's los zapatos or un par de zapatos. And how much does it cost? ¿Cuánto vale? Muy bien, estudiantes. Veinticinco dólares. Not bad. Veinticinco dólares. Un par de zapatos vale veinticinco dólares. And let's see the next item that we need at this moment. We need it to, to study with, and write with. Muy bien. Do you recall how to say it? Los lápices. Muy bien. Los lápices, ¿cuánto valen? Vale diez centavos. You see the sign for cents? Diez centavos. Diez centavos. ¿Es caro? No, no es muy caro. No es muy caro. Well, now that we have gone through uh, some of our shopping, our numbers, our vocabulary, I will invite you to look at these uh, items. Mexican food, my favorite. Mexican food. And I like to show you different types of food that I'm, I'm sure, sure, very sure that you're familiar with, or your parents are familiar with, or your friends teachers. Let's see this one. We have refried beans, frijoles, refritos. I just want you to uh, really look at the letters here, the word. Frijoles, frijoles, refritos. Fritos mean fried. Re, refried. Refritos, frijoles. Frijoles. And later on I show you how do we say frijoles also in my country, in Puerto Rico. And for now, frijoles refritos. And then we have another item. Mmm, I'm getting hungry. Burritos. And burritos are soft stuffed tortilla shells. These are tortilla shells, soft tortilla shells that are stuffed. Burrito. Burritos, because there are two of them. Burritos. Let's go to the next item and see what we're eating today. We're eating tacos. Oh, don't tell me you haven't had a taco. Oh, I'm sure you have. Tacos, these are hard tortilla shells that are stuffed with meat and salsa, and you top them with sour cream. And sometimes you can put guacamole also, because here is the guacamole. And guacamole is a sauce made of avocado, and you put a little bit of lemon and salsa mixed, if you wish. And you serve this, you serve this with chips, as you see in this picture. It's also served in meals with your rice and refried beans in, in Mexican food. So I hope you haven't gotten very hungry uh, watching these. I will go through uh, a recipe. We'll show how to make a recipe pretty soon, uh, Mexican food. I believe it's the salsa that we're going to show you how to make it. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite you to turn pay to page 46, page 46 of your workbook. And we're going to go and read these uh, months of the year in Spanish. And we're going to start with January. Enero. Now notice it's not capitalized. Names of the months and the days are not capitalized in Spanish. So it's enero. Enero. It's a long E. Enero. And then we go to February and we say febrero. Febrero. See the long E again? Febrero. And we go to March, and we say marzo. Marzo. It's a long A. Marzo. 
Now say it with me. Marzo. Very good. Muy bien. Let's go to the next month. Abril. It's not a P like in, in English. It's Abril with B. Abril. See that I is very strong. Abril. Pronounce that L also. Abril. Very good. Muy bien. Let's go to the next one. And we say Mayo. May. Month of May. Mayo. See that Y? I do it quite strong. Mayo. Mayo. And then we have Junio. Junio, not Junio. It's Junio. That J is like an H sound. Ha. Junio. Very good. Muy bien. Again, Junio. Why? Because we have the next one similar. Julio. There we have it. Julio. 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 Now, it's, it's not capitalized, and you see there's some names in Spanish. There's a name by the Julio, a boy's name, and it's capitalized, of course, but it sounds, it's the same pronunciation. Julio. And let's go to the next one. August is Agosto. 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 Very good. And then we go to September. September. Septiembre. Now, let's pause here a little bit so I can explain you something. Septiembre. See that P? It is pronounced slightly. So, septiembre. Septiembre. Now, I have heard that we probably will give away that P in the future, but for now it appears in all our dictionaries and we pronounce it. It's septiembre. You hear some people saying septiembre. Septiembre. It's perfectly all right. Septiembre or septiembre. That's September. And let's go to the next month, and we have Octubre. Octubre, that C will stay, I assure you. It's Octubre, like October. Octubre, see that you? Octubre. Muy bien, estudiantes. Let's go to the next one and see what we have. Noviembre. Noviembre. Now, that is my birthday month. It's very important to me. Noviembre. Noviembre. See that V, that I and an E? Pronounce them all. Don't leave anything out. Noviembre. November. And let's go to a wonderful month of the year. Diciembre. Diciembre. Diciembre, we have festivities. And in Puerto Rico and Spanish countries, Diciembre is very, very important because it's a month that we uh, celebrate so much. We hardly have school. And we celebrate, and we celebrate, we continue celebrating until January. So, Diciembre is extremely important in Spanish-speaking countries. Um, we are going now to introduce the weekdays. Weekdays in Spanish. And weekdays are also not capitalized unless they start in a sentence, of course. Every word that starts a sentence is capitalized, but they are not capitalized as a whole. So, it's Domingo. 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 Do you know that people call Domingo? I know people call Domingo, and it has a capital D. Domingo is a day of the week, and it's Sunday. Domingo. Does it sound like flamingo? Yes. Domingo. Domingo. And the next one is Monday, and we say lunes. Lunes. That's Monday. Lunes. See that you? I, I'm not really exaggerating. That's the way to say it. Lunes. And I want to invite you that these, um, these days of the week, you will find them on page 46 also. And there is a calendar that we chose the November month, the month of Noviembre, where you can learn these days as well. So follow me. Lunes. And then we have Martes. Martes this Tuesday sounds almost like lunes. And then we have a long one, miércoles. Miércoles. That E is accented, so it's miércoles. Miércoles. That's Wednesday. And then Thursday, jueves. That J again, jueves. Jueves. That's Thursday. It's completely, totally different from English. And then we have viernes. Viernes. 
the edness is very important to us also with the time that we relax, we start relaxing. We do relax a lot during the weekend and we visit. We visit grandparents who live far from us in, in the other towns and we relax. We don't have to work on Saturdays and Sundays. So finally we have Saturday, Sabado, Sabado, Sabado. If we could just practice these, we would like to uh, um, use our birthdays, the date of our birthday. We can use our celebrations days, holidays. We can use these uh, months of months and and uh, days of the week, and we can talk about it. So let's say you say you know already how to say my name is, and you know how to say um, soy I come from, and you know how to say. Um, where, where do you come from? And then you can say also, um, my month is, and my, mi mes, my month is, and you can say your birthday month, and also the days, and most of all, you can also say the date exactly of your month. And we're gonna practice that tomorrow. We're gonna practice that uh, tomorrow with calendars. We're also going to, in the lesson, uh, following lessons, we're going to talk about salsa. We're going to uh, make uh, the salsa, and because we're going to make salsa, we're going to talk about words that we have acquired from the Spanish language and have adopted them into the English. Here we have salsa. And salsa is also a, a dance, a song. You have heard salsa dance. And then patio, we have another word, patio, that is used in English, patio. And then we have mosquito which is mosquito for you, but for us it's mosquito, and it bites just the same. And then we have plaza, plaza, which is your plaza, plaza. So we have these words that we have acquired from the Spanish language, and we have always used them. I bet you don't probably uh, realize so. We have a couple of more words that I will, as, as, as the time provides, we will be showing you every now and then. As for now, I have to say adios, hasta mañana.